I like rhinos. I like them very much. The uh, future here in this area is depending on the tourism. The future generation they can see and they can benefit from their own resources. Animals like rhinos, elephants, the big five, you benefit from them and it must be respected. You are not feeding the rhinos, you are not giving them order, so it's a free business. <laughs> I take two of my sons, which was a little bit five years old. They were young guys. So they asked me questions. Why are we here? Why are we sleeping here? I told them this is our resources and this is our future. My first memory of going with my dad is that I learned new things. As I grow up as a man, I see an opportunity in it. So I decided to look for a job pertaining to tourism. So that's when I was employed at Palamba. So I decided to go for tour guide studies. Because I grew up with the tourism industry, the wildlife, the rhinos and everything, to bring that experience to the tourists. You can see the hyena. The biggest change is I was employed, getting paid, and also I can now support my family. It's a cultural thing. It's coming a long way. Even if you go to area like Twelve of the area was a lot of paintings. You will see rhino engravings on the rocks. That is an indication that the interaction between humans, especially the local communities and wildlife, is dating back. That intimacy relationship is coming for a long time. Uh, we are right here now at Palamwag, and Palamwag is one of the big lodges in the heart of the desert. And as you can see there, um, there is Yumbo standing behind me. We chose, it's really a tourist area. We do have elephants, lions, but as you can see, the desert is the heart of the rhinos. This is the main breeding area of the rhinos, is what we found here in this desert. It's the largest free Roman population of black rhinos uh, that you find outside national parks in the world. It's a population that communities in the Northwest have taken responsibility themselves in managing this population with the structures that government has put in place, more specifically the establishment of conservancies. These people, before independence, they took it upon themselves and decided that wildlife is our heritage. And through history, we've been living with wildlife and having wildlife in your area is like having a garden. Because of all these animals, we've got the communities that benefit from all this wildlife. And it's, it's like a triangle that fits into each other. And the communities looked after the wildlife, the wildlife doing their own thing, and the communities benefit. So already there were this intergenerational relationship between mankind and wildlife, and that bond 
is what our people actually wanted to see continuing. Very few countries have the wildlife that Namibia has. What is also important is the policies that Namibia has put in place, which also involves communities to be engaged in the management of the wildlife species and also to benefit from the wildlife resources. Turn conservation into a rural economy, turn conservation into endless opportunities that would actually cater for those young people that have nothing else to do. If it was not for rhino economy and tourism in this area, it was really difficult for young people to get or find a job. We are conservation engineers. We make conservation work in an unfenced area, and through that, we want to turn the wildlife into the rural economy that will benefit the rural communities. So, we can see now Wildlife is doing very well, the lotuses are doing well, and the community is also benefiting. So it takes all three together. Devastating hit over coronavirus fears. The airline industry is facing its biggest threat to travel since 9-11. Since March, when COVID-19 hit Namibia, things actually become very difficult. In the first place, all the lotuses closed down because of COVID-19. With us, Save the Rhino Trust, we had some donors cutting on their funding. And then we had, in the same time, a poaching case of two rhinos that was poaching. We had less boots on the ground and poachers could actually see. Now it's our change to go in and do something. So COVID-19 was tough on all of us. Ginger Morning, who is one of our trustees, actually came up with the idea of why don't we ask you to go to buy some gold for us and make gold bars and then we sell them for the rhino conservation. I was fortunate enough to um, have a chance to have lunch with Clive Johnson, the CEO of B2 Gold in Vancouver, Canada. And I looked at Clive and I said, you know, we've got rhinos, you've got gold, let's do something. Let's create a coin or a medallion or a bar using your resource to create a sustainable source of funding for rhino conservation for the future. There was it, the gold was bought, the bar was made, and I think it was January, 31st of January, that we launched the bars in, in Winduk. And suddenly one morning I had an email from my office, from my finance person saying, these people don't have salaries. So I said, oh, what now? So I pick up my phone and I phone Mark Dor. I said, Mark, I've got this problem. He said, but when I mean, we've got the fund already ready for you, you just have to apply, put a proposal in. Thousand ounces of gold can make an enormous difference to the livelihoods of the communities that live up there. We are, in essence, providing income and providing a livelihood to the communities. In the absence of tourism, especially now with COVID-19, even prior to that, when we had such a bad drought, the communities became even more dependent on the natural economy. The idea is to make this a fund that will last for the next 25, 30 years, or even longer and a portion of that will be distributed immediately as needed. And in this case, the COVID-19 crisis necessitated us to distribute funds to pay salaries to help people in the field. The proceeds of the sales from the gold bars will be going towards responsible NGOs. And we've identified Save the Rhino Trust as the, uh, the key NGO. And IRDNC, one of the first organizations that was in the Northwest, integrated rural development and nature conservation, so that ultimately the funds go to the communities and various aspects of their war on poaching. To be able to support those hardworking men and women that are always in the front line uh, between the poachers and the rhinos. If it was not for Little Gold and the Golden Bars, I think by now we should have been in big trouble. By Extracting the gold, you reinvest it in other renewable uh, resources. The gold that's coming out from the ground is actually protecting the wildlife that's working on the ground, which, which is a very good symbol for the others. I wish this was my bar. <laughs> this is the 500 gram gold bar. Um, so you'll see on, on this side, you've got the Etendeka Mountains and you've got the mother rhino with her calf. And then on the reverse side, we've got the serial number. 
You've got the RAND refinery stamp, which is very important. Anywhere in the world, people will recognize the stamp and they will know that this bar contains 99.99% gold. It is gorgeous. We wanted to make a biggest contribution. And at Balawad, we see, we see that as a way of giving back to the community. Okay, so there you'll see the, the 500 gram bar. Very special. Feel the, feel the weight, it's, it's incredible. This opportunity which presented itself is, is absolutely a once in a lifetime opportunity. We're privileged to have this. This is just absolutely gorgeous and I think this showcase really what the project is all about. It's from 24 karat Namibian gold. I'm looking at this uh, rhinos is put there uh, like um, Miss World photogenic, I would say. There are only 1,000 of these gold bars, rhino gold bars in circulation. As far as I'm aware, it's the largest single donation of any corporate to the conservation of biodiversity anywhere in Africa. Therefore, we so much appreciate and would want to continue as a government to work with b 2 gold And the fact that it's happening here in Namibia is uh, something that we can all be extremely proud about and very grateful to be to gold. Thanks to having this literal pot of gold through the funding for the Rhino Gold Bar, we're able to step in now and make sure that those trackers are supported and so are their families and their communities. We make sure that people sustain their jobs going forward. Um, and who doesn't want gold? And the B2 Gold Rhino Gold Bar has come in at a really critical time now, particularly with tourism um, being closed off and those forms of revenue not coming in. To say we have the biggest rhino population or black rhino population in the world, let it be uh, for the rest of our lives. And it's that heritage that we have, it's, it's, it's our resource that we can all look after and protect. It's our heritage. And, and, and it's also good that other people like Pitu Gold are also seeing it that way. It's actually a very nice link between the investor that buys this gold bar, the rhino tracker in the northwest of Namibia, and the black rhinos. It's an intergenerational thing. The rhino trackers teach their children how to track rhinos, their children get taught, and so it flows down. This is something that I want my children to have and that we leave a little bit of a, of a B2 Gold legacy. Um, and if I can be part of that as part of my family, I'd be very proud. It can also become an inheritance for the generations of my own clan. My children, my grandchildren. If we can bring that passion over to future generations and to hand that over to my children um, and I hope that that same passion for conservation gets migrated over to my kids. And what we've done together is create a sustainable source of funding that should outlive all of us. You know, I think as far as Peter Gold's concerned, we couldn't have chosen a better target in which to put our efforts as far as the environmental and conservation pillar is concerned. And I want to stress there, that the money that's going towards environment and conservation is actually going towards the people. Rhino is for all of us, whether you are in Canada, whether you are in Vancouver, whether you are in the US, if you really want to see conservation at play with rural communities, I therefore humbly request each and every one to join us on our Rhino tour and have a wonderful experience. This is what keeps rhinos on this planet. I've done rhino trekking experience. It was just amazing walking in that landscape of the Kunene. And as we followed them, we could now find rhinos with the calf. We got the closest distance we could. It's a warning sign. And it was just amazing and lovely. It's something to experience that Namibia can offer. something that uh, you have to do in your life.